Hello, welcome to my workshop in North Devon. Now, I am particularly pleased about this new Tormek jig, which is the SE77. And you may wonder why. The reason is that it gives me an accurate and repeatable method of grinding the sort of cambers that I need on my bench planes. I have never really had this before. Now, um, in the early days, when I had the very simple blade jig and it got worn, I used to find that by pushing down really hard on one side and lifting the other and then reversing the process, I could produce something in the direction that I wanted. Later on, I came across this improbable looking beast, which is the jet camber jig. And it does work. And I have used it for many years. But it is rather cumbersome and it's not very easy to change. I think you can see that the blade goes in the center, which is where the pivot is, and then the two sides move up and down to give you a little bit of camber. So rather cumbersome. This jig, however, seems almost perfect. We have here at the right hand end two little screws and if we, knobs, if I undo them you'll see that the bearing at this end can move from side to side. Now as that bearing moves from side to side the blade moves from side to side on the Tormek stone. I'll be showing you a bit later on. And we can grind a camber. Now, what's more, what I've discovered is that if I release these knobs by half a turn each, I can get a small camber, which suits my bench plane, my five and a half, which is tuned up as a super smoother. If I undo them both by one turn, it suits my block plane blade. And finally, perhaps most useful of all, is if I release them by two turns, I can create a suitable camber for this bevel up jack plane. Now, this really is quite remarkable. I expect you may well know that if you put a, that kind of bevel onto a bench plane blade, the wood will only see that much of it because the blade is pitched at 45 degrees. But if you put this much on a low angle jack plane, the wood will only see that much much, much less. So in order to have the same effect for this bevel up jack plane, you need to grind a considerable curve into your blade. Now I have got here my little bit of flat plastic and I checked last night and I found that I had created a camber with more or less 20 thousandths of an inch under each side. That's five tenths of a mil, half a millimeter. And that's a great deal more than I put on my bench plane. So in a moment, I think we should go to the machine and uh, have a look, see what it does. I'd like to show you the grinding of my low angle jack blade as an example of exactly how you set about using the jig. Now, 
I find it very useful these days to mark my projection on the plane blade. It's one less thing to think about when you're trying to clamp it into the jig and get it square. I find that a very useful tip. I'm also going to black the beveled side so that I can show you what's happened when I've done it. Good. I love this um, technique of putting black onto bevels for grinding and to some degree for honing because it shows you exactly what's happening. Now, when you start off, this jig is now in the square position. I know it's in the square position because these two little marks are lined up here on the moving end bearing and they're held there by the two knobs. So if I were to put in a blade that I wanted to be square, I would put it in and slide it up to the little lip here and it would produce a square result. Now, I want to curve, so I'm going to be releasing each knob two full turns. Just to the same position, half, one, half, two. And now you see this, this end plate here can actually pivot quite a lot, quite a long way. And that's what's going to allow our blade to move over the stone. Now, <clears throat> when cambering a blade, it's very important that we keep on center and center, you notice, is directly above this bearing. I've put in these extra marks here. These are just to show the width of other sizes of plane blade, which I have. So I go into the jig like this. I set my projection. And also, I have to check that I'm on center. Now, that's remarkable. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, I need to mention yet another thing. This knob has been allowed to slide so I can move it closer to the blade and it gives you more positive clamping and it reduces the chance of bending the clamping plate which is underneath. An interesting modification. Now I've gone and um, I haven't had this long. I've gone and tightened up before I've checked the squareness. Well I've been lucky this time. That's virtually perfectly square. If it wasn't, I'd slack off one of the knobs and use my little hammer here to just tap the end, I think. So, over to the machine. Um, projection, of course, for a particular angle is defined by how far above the stone you have your support bar. So it's no good my telling you what mine is. You have to work that out for yourself. Here we go. Now, you see that the blade can wander nicely from side to side. So starting there, I'm pushing on the right finger starting on the right finger and transferring to the left. Little bit of a knack. Of 
I expect you all know that uh, you don't grind right to the edge of a blade very often. That is, unless you're in the habit of uh, hitting stones and nails. But when forming a new shape, I think it's a good idea. There we go. And there is my result. Now I'll just explain what's going on here. As I said, I've only had this jig for a very short time. This plain blade had a straight grind on it. And when I did this grinding, I haven't gone all the way to the heel. I've left a bit of the straight grinding for you to see the curve that's happening with the jig. Now, I'm absolutely delighted with this thing. For the first time in about 40 years, I've got a controlled, repeatable way of creating camber. Now, just one other thing to mention. Um, Tormek seemed rather keen on this, and I don't really understand. They point out that if you grind all your chisels out of square, you can make a small adjustment on the wheels, the knobs here, and you can square them up again. Now, if you've dressed your wheel recently, and if you haven't moved your bar, you should get square automatically. However, I thought I'd have a bit of fun. I undid one of the knobs as much as possible and saw what I could get. And what I have here is a sort of micro skew. I can't quite decide what its best name is actually. But that demonstrates the capability for correcting squareness or producing out of squareness. So, a remarkable thing which I'm very happy to recommend to you. <laughs>